fueled by the state of uh, Atmanibar Bharat. She is the Kamala Bharat Raj, is the founder of uh, Satya Yoga Bangalore. She has been practicing yoga since 2000, uh, 1998 and the yoga instructor since 2005. She has qualified in MSc in Yoga uh, and MBA International Business. In 2001, she secured distinction of her personal excellence program to yoga in Taruna of 2001. And have participated in various district, state, national level yoga competitions. In 2007, she was handpicked by the Youth Affairs Ministry to represent India for the Commonwealth Day celebration in Sri Lanka. She was awarded Aryabhata International Award in 2015, awarded Yoga Kala Sadaki in 2016. Apart from her uh, yoga, she is Bharatanatyam performer and uh, sports person. She was opponent of Bhagavad Gita and she has been conducting Bhagavad Gita Abhyana at free of cost from last five years. She has conducted more than 100 free yoga awareness programs to all over the Karnataka. On this, with this small background, uh, now I um, request Srimati uh, Kamala Bharadwaj and her teammate uh, Nipa to take over the session to all of you. I request all of you to participate effectively, which is more beneficial to all of you on the personal life as well as workplace. Thank you, one and all. Ma'am, please take over. interested in the session. If you are, please occupy the front rows so I can see your faces than the seats. Okay. You must be feeling like typical school college students, no? Let's see how well to channelize them. Being 
conscious of the inputs referred to whatever gets into your system, how conscious are you about it? So this particular nutrition, not everybody needs to become a nutrition expert to know and be fit. For you to know whether what you are eating is healthy, contributing to wellness, you need to know and keep these few parameters in mind instead of confusing yourself with calories and uh, iron, mineral and all of these terminologies. Let's not get into the terminologies today. If the food that you are eating is nutritious, look what I have written as the food source. Apparently the food source has to be one that is grown below the ground with a carrot, one that is grown above the ground with the beans, comes from the tree like a coconut, comes from a plant, from a creeper like an ash guard. If you can have an essence of flower for your tea, that is brilliant. So the food source therefore is being covered from every aspect of life source possible. Now coming to the plate appearance. We usually try and look at it from the ratio perspective which means 25% of the overall food plate that you have has to be solid cooked food, 25% raw fruits and vegetables. We have already met the target just before the beginning of the session. Another 25% stay hydrated, fill it with water and please leave the last 25% portion, 25 portion empty because your stomach needs to grind and churn and keep the energy that your body requires. Staying hydrated and fasting is very important. Uh, all of us know that we all want a days off in a week which happens to be a Sunday. Similarly, your stomach also needs a rest which we call as fasting for better performance otherwise. Now the 24 hour cycle, if you divide it into 8 hours sleep and 8 to 10 hours work, the remaining is your personal life, you should have your personal life into A, family, B to yourself. So that yourself, me time, the so called me time, you need to keep yourself away from every gadget possible and focus on health and wellness as much as possible by doing any form of physical activity that we are A going to teach in the class now and it also becomes your routine if you are walking 45 minutes, swimming, jogging, doing any form of cardio but keep your physical system functioning, the metabolic rate working well. Now I have written the four quadrants of thinking. Four quadrants of thinking refers to usually when a thought strikes you, you will get all forms of thoughts, correct, positive, negative, necessary, unnecessary, every form of thought. Now, wherever your awareness goes, yeah, that is where your energy flows. We will do a small experiment to see how this actually manifests in all of you. Kindly keep your eyes closed. Don't sleep. Keep your eyes closed. Yeah. And now, you will think of a recent wedding that you attended. You will think of the boy and the girl and the clothes they wear, the venue, destination, the place, people, food, did they make a right choice, was it a wrong choice, you think about everything. Was it a right choice for the bride to select this groom? Was it not a right choice? Please keep your eyes open now. No, you are nodding your head, you are saying yes, no, whatever, whatever, okay. We will do the same experiment. So, your mind went to that area of your uh, mind's eye where your awareness is like a glowing ball of light. It is drifting from wherever. You were all here thinking about yoga. Suddenly you went to a marriage event. Physically you are all here. Mentally it went somewhere else. Now let's do a slightly different experiment, okay? Same experiment but a different feeling. Close your eyes. Think about a sudden phone call you received. One of your family members having died. It can be out of an accident, some natural or sudden death that you were least expecting. What was the first emotion you felt? How did you feel? Did you miss for not being there? 
relax. We can go on with this experiment and I say think about the day that you became very angry and all of you will show me out of this room. So let's stop at this because I just feel so cold. Yeah, there's no smile, everybody feels very tight and there is no emotion, it's quite blank. So right now, nobody died. You agree with me? Right now, you did not attend a wedding. You agree with me? But when I asked you, was it a right choice? Some of you were saying yes. Some of you said, no, not at all. It was just not the right choice. And when you suddenly thought about somebody's death, what happened? You suddenly felt a little cold and oh my God. You know, death is such a huge level of, it strikes anybody, everybody. So what am I trying to establish out of this is, this is the emotional test that you have picked up. At any given point in time, if you can handpick on your emotions, your emotional body will only think of thoughts where your awareness flows. So as most of us are thinking, feeling, saying that be positive, be positive, you just cannot randomly be positive. But what you can be is be aware and aware of what? Of the thoughts that strike you. So now we distinguish your thoughts into four categories which is positive, negative, which means if you are, if there is a crisis, if you are thinking of being a part of the solution for that problem, then positive thinking. If you are yourself becoming a problem to the crisis, then it is a negative thought process. Necessary and unnecessary refers to anything that is a wishful thought. Oh, if only I look like Rathik Roshan. If you are thinking, that is an unnecessary thought. What is a necessary thought? Today you have to come here, you have to be here, on time, wear this particular t-shirt, blah, blah, blah. Yeah? You have, if you have to be here, at what time are you supposed to start from your house and things like that, they are all necessary thoughts. So throughout the day, when, you, when a thought strikes you, ask that thought, hey, who are you? Where do you come from? Does it come from positive, negative, necessary, unnecessary? Ask yourself. If it is weighing, whatever is weighing higher, you will know you are that kind of a person. Now, just be vigilant of this. Be aware. Considering you are all most of the time sitting and working, with common sense we can know what are the vulnerable spots for your body. So because you are sitting most of the time, your eyes are naturally going to be strained. What will you do because your eyes are strained? Please once in a while, wet your hanky. Keep it on your eyes. Keep your eyes closed. Breathe well, feel relaxed, and you will know the very temperature of the tanky has changed. Yeah, if it's wet and cold, it would turn slightly warmer, which means it is absorbing all that heat from your eye. And that in itself is such a simple uh, tip, but it has a huge impact on how much it can relax your system. You will have irritations with related to your nose. Why? Because most of the time, this is the kind of air that we're breathing. It is getting uh, circulated in the same space, it's not being cross-ventilated. So if you have issues with related to your nose, what do you do? You will cleanse your system either while doing your neti or doing simple Nadi Shuddhi Pranayama. You are ready for a quick Nadi Shuddhi right away? Yes. Yes, thank you. Otherwise I didn't know what else to teach you. <laughs> okay, so if you are all ready for a quick Nadi Shuddhi Pranayama, uh, I'll teach you what to do and how to do. See, Nadi Shuddhi Pranayama, the most important thing is keep your back erect, chest out, shoulders rolled back. Yeah, you will do it now, you are doing it. As I am instructing, I am expecting, you will also do it along with the instructions. I will be saying, you will be doing. Ready? Yes. 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 Oh, you are all very scared, huh? <laughs> Don't worry, all the dignitaries are off. <laughs> anyway. So what do you do? You will breathe in through the left nostril. First, before you get into the actual uh, pranayama, take your left hand in chin mudra, keep it on your thigh facing, keep facing up. Yeah. I can actually perform it here for you. And I hope I am audible enough also. If I am not, you can raise your hand, I will increase the volume. Yes. <laughs> Let me speak. No, why is everybody raising their hand? So you will keep your left hand in Chin Mudra on your thigh, right hand in Nasi Kagra Mudra, which means the first two fingers right in between your eyebrows, these two fingers closing your nose, inhale through the left nostril, exhale through the right, then again inhale right, exhale left. Please practice. 
practice? I'll repeat. I'll repeat. I'll repeat. Why you're doing? I'll repeat. Keep your left hand in Shimudra on your thigh. Take the first two fingers. Keep it right in between your eyebrows. Keep it right in between your eyebrows. Keep your chin slightly tilted up. Inhale left. Inhale through the left nostril. You don't have to use two hands. One hand is more than sufficient. Take your left hand. No, no, no. Left hand is chin mudra. You don't even think about it. Yeah. Yes. So keep your left hand. Take your right hand. First two fingers right in between your eyebrows. Close your nose. Inhale through the left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale. This is one round. Then you will do 11 rounds. So keep doing. So always remember that your breathing starts and ends with left nostril only. You can keep the first two feet. You can keep your left hand in Shimudra. Yeah. First two fingers right in between your right toes. Keep doing that. If anybody has doubts, I have cleared a few, but for those of you who are slightly not sure if you are doing it correctly, raise your hand. The rest all of you are sure on how to do? I will repeat one last time. You can now listen to me, before which you will exhale from your left nostril and relax. There are a few tips that you have to follow. Whenever you are breathing like this, you will, uh, just a second. See, you can give me a hand mic. So I can. It's called telepathy. What time is the best to do this? this Sandhya Kana is always considered the best, which is sunrise and sunset time, where your body circadian is so receptive to receive the energy. But otherwise, Nadi Shuddhi Pranayama that you just practiced has no restriction on time. You can do it anytime you are free. If you think somebody is talking too much next to you, you don't want to listen, just start Nadi Shuddhi. That is also perfect time. Okay? So Nadi Shuddhi Pranayama has no restriction, has no contraindication, which means anybody who is unwell, somebody pregnant, somebody bedridden, anybody and everybody can practice Nadi Shuddhi Pranayama. Now, there is also another pranayama that I have mentioned, which is Kapalabhati Pranayama. Apparently, we do not suggest this for people who have issues with heart or high BP. For them, we have one more coming up after this, which is Sadanta and then I'll teach you. Kapalabhati, let's see what it is. Kapala refers to skull, Bhati refers to shining. So, does your skull really shine? Yes, it does. Why? Because there is a lot of oxygenated blood supply that floods into your system that really cleanses and it works as a detox. Let's quickly see how to do this, but if anybody has issues with BP or heart, I would suggest refrain yourself from doing this. Kapalabhati can be done in two different ways. One is single nostril Kapalabhati, the other is both the nostrils Kapalabhati. Single nostril Kapalabhati, I'll teach you first. You are ideally supposed to tuck your stomach in and hit it to your spine as much with as much force as possible. This is forceful breathing. The Nadi Shuddhi Pranayama which you did, please do not produce sound. A lot of you are saying, no sound. Soundless breathing is the best breathing because you directly transcend yourself to meditation while you are doing Pranayama. But if there is a lot of sound, it's an interference, noise. But in Kapalabhati, there is naturally a lot of noise because it's forceful breathing. 
let me show you how to do single nostril kapalabhati tell me if uh, me standing here helps what's the standing down yeah. good oh good there's no shadow also nice uh, so how do you do single nostril kapalabhati is simply because most of the time you're sitting and working and this has no free flow so what should you do a you can do some crunches see i can uh, show you standing crunches because in the office you will not have this luxury to sleep and do crunches so i'll show you how to do crunches on standing okay you can all stand Now, standing, what can you do is 
just lift up which means you will inhale stand up on your toes exhale come down to your heels in the whole process don't have a uh, hunched back keep your back erect yeah chest out shoulders turned back rolled back and this chin don't bend it down slightly lift it up so be in the proper keep your spine so straight that you can feel the energy flow now do it for about 10 times fast then you can do medium and slow at home okay which means take a break once in a while like this and do some stretches because your calf muscles get activated if your calf muscles get activated what happens is it has a direct impact on your heart your calf muscles and heart is very much related that is why back then people would say after a certain age people are going to do a lot of yatra and most of it is climbing up and your calf muscles worked so that it has a healthy heart too now if you are having this simple practice of stretching your entire body and then stay there for some time so what are you doing from the tips of your toes to the tips crown of your head and then higher up stretching your body and then relaxing with this what happens your body entire body gets oxygenated blood supply without good oxygenated blood supply you naturally become a better person this is just like if there's a sanitary pipe in the house, there's a lot of dirt or dust accumulated halfway through and then there's no free flow of water. You clean it and then what happens? The gush of water is higher. Similarly, the current in the body is higher. What's the current in the body? Your energy. Your energies are going to be higher as long as your body is functioning at its optimum level. For that, what do you do? Practice yoga. Practice naturopathy. How do you do? By detoxing your system as much as possible. How do you do? By flushing your system with as much water as possible. What water do you drink? Preferably warm to hot. Therefore, what happens? System gets flushed internally. While you flush your system internally, you are also cleansing your system internally. When you are cleansing, what happens? There is no dust, there is no dirt, there is no unnecessary knot. We call it psychic knot. Brahma Granthi, Rudra Granthi, Vishnu Granthi, Vibhedini. It breaks all of that and comes out. Now we have also written, uh, so this shoulder relaxation is something I have just told you. You can also practice very slowly and gently, which we practiced for the previous session. We will not miss out on what happened in the previous class. So what do you do? You slowly raise your hand up, okay? And then palm facing up. And then very slowly you will take your hands up. Then what will you do? Bend it down, look at your elbow. So, the fact that you turn your head in that particular direction, your head feels highly relaxed. You will feel a tingling sensation around the skull. Why do you feel it? Because when you expand and contract anything, there is oxygenated blood supply being restricted and that gush you will naturally promote your own body and mind with that kind of energy. Shall we practice that also? Yes. Good. So the thing is, is, is I never asked you to stand. What if sit? If you want to stand and do something else, let's sit and do. Because most of the time you are all sitting, no? Now, on an out of 10, you will only come to the shoulder level. Okay, don't go beyond this. From 10 to 20, after your palms up, you will come here. 20 to 30 down. So don't focus on bending your elbow down. That does not do any good to you. Ideally, what are you supposed to focus is bending your body. This lateral arc bending is what is expected out of you. From here, if you bend here, 
there's virtually no impact okay so bend in here and look at your elbow so you will twist your neck in that position to a state where you should feel that tingling sensation around your head ready keep your eyes closed we'll start with the right hand yes when i say 10 you will come to shoulder before that you will keep it down which is 1 2 and see all of you you have your hands slightly forward no take it back as much as possible or straight don't ever get it in the front of your body so if you are considering your body level let it be slightly back not front start eyes closed back straight don't comfortably lean on the chair and sit slightly come front you are doing an exercise yeah yes keep your back right chest out shoulders rolled back don't lean on the chair too much why are you already at the shoulder no problem slowly eight shall we start from the beginning yes one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay where is your shoulder be next to your shoulder only okay now slightly palms up from here you will only come till here no bending okay only this is your destination now from here start 11 12 keep your hands back 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 Now straighten your lower back. That you pull the base of your spine. Stretch it up well. Stretch your body as much as you can. Stretch, 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 stretch. Now from there you will bend down and look at your elbow. Let me give the counting. Please wait. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 25 26 27 28 29 30 now see be in the same position look at your elbow this is the final position thereby you are able to see your elbow but it is behind your ear not in the front behind your ear okay Now from there we'll come back to the straight position. Thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty. Stretch, 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 stretch. See if you can touch the roof. Stretch. Now from thirty. Now we'll slowly come back. Okay, to shoulder level. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Palms down. Keep your shoulders relaxed. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Relax. Practice the same on the other hand. Today only. <laughs> no. Uh, so this is about your uh, hand exercise. So whenever you are sitting in the work, once in a while you do this. But this really, really, I have seen this in my class. Uh, drastically brings down your stress, your anxiety, the blood pressure, things like that. So your shoulders are primarily to be relaxed. Have you heard this uh, statement where people say, "He is my shoulder to cry on," "She is my shoulder to cry on." You've heard this? It's not a statement that just comes up. Even in Canada, they say. 
ನಾವೇನೇ ತಪ್ಪು ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಹೊಟ್ಟೆಗೆ ಹಾಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಡಿ ಯಾಕೆ ನಾವೇನೇ ತಪ್ಪು ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ನಿಮ್ ಕಿವಿಗೆ ಹಾಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಡಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ಯಾ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ರೀಸನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೇನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಶೋಲ್ಡರ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ಯುವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸ್ಟೈಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಿ ಅಟ್ ಅನ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಸಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ವರ್ಕ್ ಆನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನಾವು ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ನ್ಯೂರೋ ಮಸ್ಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಬ್ರೀದಿಂಗ್ ನ್ಯೂರೋ ಮಸ್ಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಬ್ರೀದಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾರ್ಡಿನರಿ ಎಕ್ಸಸೈಸ್ ವೆರ್ ಯುವರ್ ನ್ಯೂರಾನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವೇಟೆಡ್ ದ ವೈಟಲ್ ಕೆಪಾಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಲಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಮೋಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿವೈಟಲೈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಬೈ ಯು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಅ ನ್ಯೂ ಮಾಡೆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಸೊ ದ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಒನ್ ಮಾಡೆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ಟು ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಸೊ ಹೌ ಡು ಯು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಅ ಬೆಟರ್ ವರ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಈಸ್ ಬೈ ಫೋಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಇನ್ಪುಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಗೆ ಇನ್ ಟು ಯುವರ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲೆಟಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಅ ಬೆಟರ್ ವರ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ನಾನು ನ್ಯೂರೋ ಮಸ್ಕಿಲ್ ಬ್ರೀದಿಂಗ್ ಇವನ್ ಶೋ ನೆಪ್ಪ ನ್ಯೂರೋ ಶಿ ವಿಲ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಐ ವಿಲ